Coming up, as the NBA playoffs roll on and those crosstown New York Knicks continue to have success, we ask the question, how much star power is needed to have long-term, deep playoff success? And are there some free agents of note playing right now? We dive in, coming up next. You are Locked On Nets, your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ah, uh, yes, my friends, it is the Locked On Nets podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team, the Brooklyn Nets, every single day. He's Doug Nori. I'm Adam Armbrecht. We thank you, as always, for making us your first listen of the day. We are 100% free on all those great platforms. And let you know, today's episode is brought by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. And, Doug, maybe there are some terms to being successful and making the NBA playoffs. I had this thought watching the Knicks, as beaten and battered as they may be, get their series lead against the Pacers last night. What does it take or how how successful can you be as a team that maybe does not have a 100% 1A star? Why does it matter? Because the Brooklyn Nets don't have one of those. I think Jalen Brunson would take umbrage with you saying he's not a 1A star. I think the to start, I mean, like, but I mean, I guess I don't know if we want to just, you know, jump off the the turnpike exit here he, at this point or later but i think the question you know start is like you know is jalen brunson a 1a star because i think going yes. into the season we would have said like probably not and then he drops 44 um in <laughs> in a game five where he just completely eviscerates uh the pacers and then you think to yourself mm -hmm. well maybe we have to redefine who our 1a stars are and as long as these yes. guys can guys like him either even though they might be you know diminutive and and not along the lines of what we usually think around like these big, you know, the Jokic's and the LeBron's and guys like this is like, could we start to reevaluate who our one, a stars are in the, in the NBA. And if the Knicks are the Knicks doing that in the moment with a guy like Brunson. So, but in general, the path that the Knicks have taken to building a team, you know, are they a contender? I mean, odds would say they're not, but the, are they, have they had a wildly successful season? Of course. You know, the path the Knicks have taken have for sure been much different than a lot of the other teams sort of in like similar spots. Yeah, no, and we can on Jalen Brunson have that part of the conversation. It is something that I think is interesting to me, and it's not his fault, and it's nothing the Knicks fans should be apologizing for playing the Pacers and coming off of the first round series where you played the 76ers, a team that had its own injury concerns at the time. I, I, I love watching Jalen Brunson play. I wish Jalen Brunson was on the Brooklyn Nets. He actually yeah. would be kind of the perfect player you need on this team. So there's just no point. way d diminishing what Jalen Brunson is as a player or talent. But I, I think I do wonder about it. It's kind of the same way when you saw Donovan Mitchell go off and help the team help the team beat Boston there. And you go, oh, well, what could this mean? Can he move the needle? Then he suffers an injury of his own and he misses a game. And then, by the way, Cavs almost beat Boston without him. I don't know what that's supposed to tell you. But does it matter? To me, it matters if Jalen Brunson finishes off, helps the Knicks finish off the Pacers, and then goes to Boston, and I've mentioned this before, gets bottled up by all of those defensive talents they have there, I think it'll bring us back down to that kind of reality of, doesn't take away what Jalen Brunson is, but also probably resets your, your standard of, who do we need to be our best player on our team if we want to have the ultimate success? Does it matter that it's a fluky playoff here in the Eastern Conference? Probably not. But I wonder if you played this playoff season in the Eastern Conference 10 times, would the Knicks always get what looks like to the Eastern Conference Finals? How many times would they get there? I think we'd find ourselves saying far less than more. Does that make sense? Yeah, some, and it, look, and sometimes context ends up telling the, writing the narrative, right? Like um, the context of who you get to play and how other teams are shaping up and how injured everyone is. And, and like sometimes that ends up being I mean, sometimes it's sort of forgotten in, 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 you know, as time marches on and sometimes, and, and maybe you want to say, look, every year there's just context and it's just whoever comes out last is, is that's, they deserve to be there. So I, I, it's a little hard to sometimes say that. Yeah. I mean, the Knicks like faced a, a compromised Embiid, but they played their asses off. So like, I don't know, right? <laughs> right? Like they, I, I would never take away the idea that they deserve to win. They played as exciting a brand of basketball as you can get when it comes to like just putting it all on the court. I think what the, a guy like Brunson should show the Nets, and I think they probably understand this at a, at a 
on a, on a, honestly on a deep and on a surface level is that mm -hmm. what we see now in the NBA on, and again, in many ways, it's still very simple. It's like to be a really good team, you have to have a guy that can beat his man consistently and yeah. that you can turn to when the going gets tough. Like the mm -hmm. team, the, the teams that end up really getting separated at this point and being very good, honestly, and like the idea that they can continue to move forward is they all have that guy. You'll want to call it a superstar, whatever. They have a guy that can do those two things. Because the most yeah. important thing in the NBA, honestly, once you get past all the other X's and O's stuff, is like, can your bot guy beat his guy one-on-one? -on -one? If your guy can beat his guy one-on-one -on -one consistently, then you have a chance. All the best teams have that guy. The teams that struggled, like the Nets this year, don't have that guy. <laughs> and, the, and then after that, it's like sort of a game of chess. Brunson is clearly that guy, right? Like he is, he's that, he's that dude. And you know, when the Nets, I think that's what the Nets are probably desperately seeking now in this off, these, the, the, either this off season or next one is like they need a guy like that that they can turn to night in and night out. They clearly don't have it right now. Yeah, and and, and as for whatever it's worth, Jalen Brunson, I talk about going to play the Celtics, who by the way have their own kind of fragility around them in terms of talent versus success that they've had in recent years, regular season versus playoffs. But you go and look at the games that he played against them this year, Jalen Brunson. He was highly successful, scoring over 27 points, over five assists, over two rebounds in those five games against the Celtics this season. So if you compare that to where his numbers were this year, it's right on par. He's almost a 29-point scorer. So if you thought that there's that opportunity, it obviously gets different in playoffs. It ramps up the intensity. But he certainly proved it on a regular season level. So, you know, listen, again. Well well, well, also, real quick, I mean, they haven't won the series yet either. <laughs> like the, the other thing well, that the, I, I, the, yeah, I, mean, that's I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I'm kind of like you know, you're catching a stray here because it's not really your fault. Like they're coming off a huge win. The other thing the playoffs have have taught us, I think, is that the thing. I mean, I I was on yesterday's podcast being like, take all the unders on Brunson. They're cooked. Okay, well that looks wrong, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, right? Like they've you know, fast in the NBA. Playoffs. I don't want to look at. I you know I'll peek at the box score here, but I might have been wrong on that one, right? Like so, the thing you sometimes think in the moment, and maybe I'm more guilty about this than other people. I'm not sure. The thing you think in the moment that, that that tends to be front of mind is sometimes what carries over what we think you're gonna do. I, you're not guilty of this in the sense that you're no more guilty of it than anybody else. I think, but they haven't won the series, and we could come out of Game Six and be like. You know, uh, now they're in a fight for their lives in game seven, but it wouldn't it wouldn't change the idea of what a Brunson in going into Boston would look like. So I think I'm with you there. And that's and that's I think that the, I'm, I'm jumping to that place because it's well, if you lose to the Pacers, then that tells you a different story, too. You are this talent. You did lead this team. The team overall is very good. But ultimately, you fell to what perceptually, and then you flip it over and say, what did Indiana accomplish this year? How should we be thinking about them and what, who they have on their roster, right? But I think perceptually, you'd say, oh, a lot of things broke well for you, and you were unable to get past the Pacers and go to the Eastern Conference Finals and take on the Boston Celtics. Coming up here in a second, we'll continue that discussion. Are we... Are we ignoring the Indiana Pacers in all of this as they continue to try to push their way beyond the Knicks? And are there a couple of free agents that we should be watching as these playoff series unfold? We'll get into that coming up here in just one second. All right, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Look, the world out there can feel overwhelming at times. You can feel like sometimes those big things can feel obviously overwhelming. Sometimes the small things can be overwhelming as well. You have all different kinds of stressors in your life. Sometimes you just feel like you have to get things off your chest, but we keep things bottled up. It can start to really affect us negatively. We all know that's the case. We, this is where BetterHelp can step in. If you're thinking about giving uh, therapy a try, uh, give BetterHelp a try. It's designed to be fix, uh, fitted around your schedule. It's super flexible. They're going to line you up with, a therapist that you can speak to, and then you kind of decide if that's the right person for you. If not, you switch at any time. That's the, what BetterHelp is there for. It's there to work with you and for you. It's designed to be convenient. It's flexible. It's totally suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire. If you get matched with that licensed therapist, you switch at any time for no additional charge. BetterHelp has figured this out for, like I said, all those big things, all the small things as well. Get it off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MBA today to get 10% off of your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Locked On MBA. So as we continue today's Locked On Nets episode, talking about the playoffs and just narrative building around individual players and also teams. What does it mean for their success and how should we recalibrate a little bit? I'll say, you know, we didn't talk about the uh, Cavs-Celtics game without Donovan Mitchell, but I, keep, I do keep coming back to the Jason Tatum of it all 
is very interesting to me. And it's not just him. It's the Celtics overall. They just seem to be this team that has a hard time living up to the own standard they create for themselves in the regular season. We are They're going to play on Wednesday night here, as will the Thunder and the Dallas Mavericks. But when I think about that, questionable is Donovan Mitchell for this game as of right now, the time of the recording on Wednesday morning. You are a Don healthy Donovan Mitchell away from being in a 2-2 series against the Cleveland Cavaliers. So again, it's the same thing. Are we disrespecting the Pacers when we say, oh, it should be so much easier, and if the Knicks lost to them, that's an embarrassment for the Knicks? Likewise, the Celtics. Am I am I wrong in saying it shouldn't be? It should have been a sweep automatically, or that maybe the Cleveland Cavaliers are a better team than most people want. And from a Nets perspective, you downplay how good they are because you've been building this other narrative around how Donovan Mitchell obviously is going to leave there. If I'm Mitchell and I'm injured and I watch that last game, I think, damn. If I was on the court, we win that game because the players that we have on this roster are capable of going toe to toe with Boston. Yeah, I mean, he was on the court the game before and they lost. So, I, like, I, I, I get, I get what you're saying. Well, <laughs> I get what you're saying. You go, I, <laughs> say, damn, maybe I shouldn't be on this team, and maybe have a better chance of beating the Boston Celtics. <laughs> it's funny with the Celtics because the Celtics, um, to some degree, well, it's not like it's not really Nets related, but it's like it's this idea of we talk about this so many times. We talk about this with the Nets. Really, talk about this with the Nets a lot when we talk about rebuilding and stuff like that, or just where they were. It's like expectations are what drive your level of success, right? I mean, the Celtics are up three to one in the series and have kind of crushed people and crushed teams in the playoffs so far. And it's like, eh, and I know what you're saying. It's like, hasn't been good enough, but it's like, I don't know. They've lost two games and, and Tatum scored 33. And it's all yep. it's mostly because when he makes the finals, you know, and, and then you're, you're, you think that you, the expectations just end up changing. This guy's played like yeah. a, the most playoff games really as then as most playoff minutes, like more than anybody else. Cause they're so successful every year. Now they just haven't won the championship. And so that then ticks them down in the success department. But like, I do, I do stop a little bit on the Celtic. A, right. So the standard is one a, well, you got to go to the finals or you have to be, you have to be so dominant game in game out in the playoffs that you would only yeah. look at other reasons on your team that your team didn't advance, never you. And, right? he's been, like it's and a, look, yeah. he's been super inefficient this series too, right? Like yeah. he has not been yep. that great. He has a 42-23 from three-pointer uh, from beyond the arc. I mean, 94% from the line, but 27 and 10, you're like, okay, but it's like kind of an inefficient. But they're, again, they're still up three to one. So this is like, a, it's a it's a weird spot. To, it, I do think it's a weird spot. He's a specifically a weird guy to sort of evaluate because I think the expectations have reached these levels where it's only probably like six or seven guys in the discussion. And he's maybe like the seventh guy, except he's got more success than most of the other guys <laughs> above him. Right. right? right. It's like, because um, yeah. it's like, you know, people are going to put like Shea above him. It's like, okay, probably correct. Tatum's has overwhelmingly more success than Shea yeah. so far in, in his playoff career. Right. I was like, not even close. It's not, it's not even in the same discussion. And, except that he gets knocked for like never quite getting over that final thing. Except you actually look at the playoff resume. I, they're like not comparable. Like Luca, yeah. these guys that are above him again, I would probably put those guys above him too, but it's, 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 it's increasingly unfair to Tatum. If you, if you look at it, it's just so interesting, right? I, I, I do yeah, find it like yeah. a really interesting narrative because he gets dinged for being so good for so long. That he eventually starts dropping in the ranking somehow uh, <laughs> in like this of really course. weird way. That, that, that's what I think. Yeah, that's why none of these things, whether it's talking about Brunson and what it means or talking about Tatum now, this is not a knock on these individual players. It's to your point. We we use it on the phrase on the podcast. Well, only, you only get one team gets to win the championship. So everybody else failed. Well, it's kind of the same. It's the same thing for players and heightened even more. Well, only one only one player gets to be looked at as the one that went through the playoffs, that went through the conference finals, that got to the finals, that led their team to the championship. And for Jason Tatum, it's almost like, well, if the team was a little bit worse so that they didn't get as deep into the playoffs, what would the narrative be? Boy, they don't give Jason Tatum enough help to get him over the hump, to help him get the opportunity to be that successful. Instead, you consistently show up there. It's what they did with LeBron James. When they, okay, we'll compare him to Michael Jordan. But the first thing we're going to tell you is went to a lot of finals without winning. Am I right? And you can't, it seems like people are willing to go, well, right. But without LeBron James, the Cavaliers aren't even sniffing the playoffs probably in those seasons. Doesn't matter. He's not doing the final step. And therefore you start to 
diminish everything else that they've done. And Tatum falls into that category, at least at this point right now. And, and by the way, they've and they. I mean, to, to go the anti-Tatum side here is they've they've lost the teams that that you know they they win in as overwhelming favorites against, like Miami last year, right? Like they yeah. lose in the conference and he's finals. Underperformed sometimes in those matchups, and they were you know they were projected to win that, and they should have won. Right. Like yep. that, that series. And, and they didn't. So he does get knocked for that. So it's weird because he's like gets himself to the place where you should be to be in the conversation and then kind of falls a little bit short. I think when it comes to the Nets, like how this all sort of wraps into the Nets and thinking about how they build their team going forward. I still think I mean, it's still overwhelmingly clear that they need one of these guys like you still need whether yeah. it's whether whether we argue the place on the sort of like overall rankings list of where they rank. What we would know one would argue is like the Nets don't have anyone in the top 30 easily, probably the top 40, right? So, and when we're talking about these guys, you need to have a guy minimum in the top 10 to even begin the discussion. And this is clearly where the Nets are, are like going, right? It's like they want to add one of these guys that's in the top 10 or top 15, let's say. Like if you're going to throw Mitchell in, like you think Donovan Mitchell, I think is clearly in that. You need one of these guys in that group just to start. The Nets don't have it. And yeah. When and so now, kind of like anyone would be better than they what they have because they don't. You know, Bridges probably takes a knock here. No one else is even close. Don't come I, I, the Cam Thomas thing. It's not he's not there. So it's I, not to say he can't be, but he's for sure not there not right there now. Right now, no, yeah. of course not. Of course not. And no one else. And no one else is even close. So like the, what they're thinking is, we have to even. We just have to start with one of these guys. Like we don't even have anywhere even close to this. And these are the guys you kind of have to build your team around to have any fighting relevancy at all. And they just see their way of to do it is going the free agent trade route rather than the draft route, which is probably just going to take too long for them. And that's why I mean, coming up here in a second, I want to get a little more net centric, couple of free agent guys that I wanted to note here. But just to your point, Doug, whether it's the Knicks and Jalen Brunson, listen, I'm saying one, a one B, whatever, you know, he's clearly that guy of that caliber, go through every single team. They're coming playoffs. They have at least one or multiple guys that can fall into that list. The Knicks have them. Obviously the Nuggets do the Timberwolves, the Mavericks, the Thunder have at least one Celtics. The Cavs have at least one. The Pacers are maybe the intriguing one. And that mostly probably comes down to Pascal Siakam being a little bit on the older side of things and never really being the elite number one guy. And then Halliburton in the injury. So, but when you look at who's currently still in the playoffs, nobody's walking in the door going, we do it with pluck and scrappiness and, you know, the collective effort of the team. No, you need to have one of these guys. So we'll continue that part of the conversation. And I'll also pose the question around spending on Nicholas Claxton or maybe a couple of free agents currently in the playoffs. We'll get into that coming up next. All right, before we get into that, I'll tell you about our friends over at Game Time. Look, if you're into getting tickets, you want to have the ticket buying experience be fun because you're about to go do something fun, whether it's the game, it's the concert, it's the comedy show, it's the theater performance, whatever it is. You want to get yourself to the place. You want to know exactly what you're going to see. You want to make sure you're getting the price, best prices around. This is where Game Time can step in. They've solved all this stuff for you. They got last minute tickets. They got flash deals. They got zone deals. It's easy to find and buy really kind of any kind of ticket. MLB, WNBA. If you want some Liberty tickets right now, you go over on Game Time. Indiana Fever head of the town. One Miss Caitlin Clark. These ones are going for it's a top event over on Game Time, which makes a lot of sense considering who's coming to town. But you can find some pretty good deals. I mean, for that game and for all the rest of them, like I said, MLB as well. Maybe you're headed across town. You want to see if you're hoping for a game seven over at Game Time with uh <laughs> over at MSG. Good luck. Game Time can still help you grab some of those tickets. It's all there for you on Game Time. Uh, on the Game Time app, you create an account, use the code locked on NBA to get your you're, you're going to grab uh your twenty dollars off your first purchase. Sorry about that. Terms apply again. Create account and redeem the code locked on NBA for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute. Tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right, so as we tie a bow on to the Locked On Nets episode, we got playoff games continuing tonight. Certainly going to have with OKC and Dallas. You mentioned earlier, so we'll, we'll all put ourselves into this pot, you know, maybe proclaiming things a little bit too soon. After game one of that series, I was like, oh, baby, OKC, watch your backs. This is going to be a great, you know, Western Conference matchup. We'll see how they can handle the Minnesota Timberwolves. Well, oh, by the way, <laughs> it looks like both those series have gone in different directions as it's unfolded. So it's it's easy to, I mean, at least for me, I get very hyped on not even not, not getting game to game narrative to, you know, caught up in it. But I just when you watch a really good game from Team X from player Y, it's like, oh, baby. You want to see more of this, right? I mean, Anthony Edwards, like I, I want to see a thousand playoff games with Anthony Edwards and 
all of a sudden you just get reminded about the quality of the defending champion Denver Nuggets or that, yeah, Luka, and even though Kyrie hasn't been as dynamic scoring-wise for the Dallas Mavericks, that team is built differently than they were a year ago. So the playoffs are also kind of an eye-opener in terms of balance of rosters, depth of rosters, and how important that can be. The one thing I want to note here, first on the Brooklyn Nets, all this conversation that we're having, is this why you think ultimately they will make the swing this summer as opposed to waiting it out another year and clearing money off the books? Because without the guys, you are just kind of in purgatory? Or do we stay with the Brooklyn Nets are willing to be patient, quote unquote, and have the big season be another year away? Yeah, I think we're still another year away. So I think I think it's going to be a little bit of pain or a lot of bit of pain this season going forward. All their other stuff is set up to be 2025 as the swing, whether it's trade, whether it's like hoping one of these guys gets all the way to free agency, like whatever it is. Because even if you look at how things are structured, and good job, Eric Slater, pointing this out. That's something we knew if we could just look at. But he, I'm just going to discredit it because he put it in mind's eye. Is that even Cam Johnson's when they structured his contract, the the lowest money hit was for next year. Not, oh, sorry, not yeah. next year, the year after the 25, 26 season. Yeah. Right? It's all sort of like been plotted out along these lines. That like his, I think it's three million less in 25, 26. Right? Like scrapping at every available dollar going into that when they're going to have Ben Simmons off the books. Bridges still makes really no money uh, for like what he is. And I know he took a thing here in terms of the overall collective feeling about him. The contract's still totally amazing. Um, to, you know, we'll see what happens with Claxton. The speculation is that even if they did sign him, they would probably do a similar approach, which is money, less money, more money kind of going forward to make sure 25, 26 is as clean as possible. They just have this, they just have to clear the Simmons stuff off. I, I, I mean, I guess I suppose the one way I would change that is if they somehow found the buyer for Simmons and they felt like they weren't going to get totally hammered on the negative asset value. Whether you might, because then you're just getting, I mean, I guess that would change my mind. I personally don't see that happening because I just can't imagine any other team as being like, yes, please. Uh, outside of just, getting overwhelmed with picks but yeah that would be the one thing that would change it if i've just misread that situation but i don't think there i think it's all it's all really really aligned for next summer yeah it does seem to be the case one thing i want to throw out here too on the nicholas claxton note you know 20 million 25 million 40 million who knows what they're going to pay this guy potentially but if somebody else came <laughs> to, please tongue in cheek don't let's not get in the weeds there fellas in the comments uh if we're going into this summer and somebody does come in with the offer that blows them away I, one thing I'm from watching the specifically the the Knicks Pacers series. When you go over, this was care of I think hoops hype. They listed kind of the top free agents available going into this offseason, and it's a weak free agent class at that. But among the top 25, right there at 25 and 26, guys like Obi Topping, guys like Moritz uh, Wagner from the Magic that just got bounced out as well. But then you also have Hartenstein for the Knicks. Now I assume the Knicks are going to retain him, but I do think about that idea of Hartenstein's a kind of different category from what it would cost. But a guy like Obi Toppin, who's a bench player, played 20 minutes, 21 minutes this season, but scores a little over 11 points, has a bit of a perimeter shot. I do wonder if the Nets will do the equation, using him as the you know model of player, that level of player, of going 22, 23 million for Nicholas Claxton, or maybe you know 12 million for, for Obi Toppin, a guy that's high energy, grabs a lot of rebounds, can stretch the floor a little bit. Do you think that should the Nets be like watching guys like that, especially in playoff basketball, that maybe actually end up getting slightly elevated roles relative to what expectations were coming in? And I'm not here telling you Obi Toppin is the second coming of whoever. No, I know. Just that, saying. hey, you're, there, there are ways to spend money, right? There's smart ways to spend money, and you can actually make your team a little bit better and deeper in the process. Yeah, I mean, look, the free agent class is weak. I, this is why guys like no Obi Toppin get thrown around because this is like a, a free agency becomes an increasingly weak venture. I do think there's a chance that next summer is different because of like the cap coming up and guys just yeah, kind of yeah. hitting right around the time where it might might make sense for them to wait all the way to free agency on that. So I, I do think that there's a world where it lines up differently. I probably wouldn't do this. I, I do wonder sort of where they're going to land in this, like, you know, um, in this middle tier of, of guys, right? Um, I don't think we're going to see too much movement there. I think they're going to hope that guys like Simmons can come back here and like they get a little more from Clowney and guys like that. And yeah, I think yeah. I just yeah, think they definitely. are going to resign Simmons because, like, if you look at the if it, oh, sorry, sorry, um, resign Claxton because if you look I at the free like, agent list, it's it's rough. It's like <laughs> Kyle Anderson, Mo, Mo Wagner, right? Like Gary Trent, 
I've got old friend Spencer Dinwiddie, Isaac Okoro. I mean, I'm, I'm mentioning a few more guys that are like still playoff relevant at this point. Derek Jones Jr. Yeah, is still yeah. in the playoffs. Like there are guys still in the playoffs. I, I really don't think the Nets see anyone as having elevated themselves higher. I think they're going to all signs that they're going to make Claxton the priority. Mm-hmm. I think there's a little bit of a risk here that they're going to overpay him. But just because they seem to have done stuff like this in the past with their own guys. But yeah. I, it's hard for me to know exactly where the number should be. The number, it feels like should be as low as possible <laughs> just because so that they have as much flexibility as possible. Well, go ahead. No, no. And I was just going to say, but to your point about what they did with uh, Cam Johnson's contract, it's the same thing. Yeah. Hey, yeah, we're going to pay you and you're going to get close to 24 million this year. And guess what? Next year, it's going to be closer to 18 million, whatever the numbers end up being. Well, we're going to do it in a way that gives us that advantage. It doesn't mean that it's right, but if we follow the, the breadcrumbs, it feels like that's what it's pushing towards without it being too punitive to any other moves you want to make. Yeah, I mean, Cam was 25.6, 23.6 next year, 21.5 and 25.26, and then back up to 23.6. So it's like a $4 million difference from this year till two years from now. Um, I think probably with Claxton, we, again, we probably see it end up being something like the same way, no matter where the numbers come out. But I don't see them. There are names of note here, like we said at the top in the free agency class. I just don't see the Nets tying themselves to anybody sort of new at any real number knowing that they want to keep as clean as possible but like we said before i think what we're looking at is another year of just i mean i don't want to call a wheel spinning but it could be it could really feel like that at times um new coach maybe we get a little more energy and maybe we take a little bit you know maybe that's the the spark they needed was just to get a little more energetic more than anything else maybe some new systems especially on offense but overall, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's going to be huge changes. Okay, we are going to get out of here, rolling all the way through the playoffs, all the way through the draft too. Nets, they have a draft pick. No, are we still going to come at you? Of course. That's because just that's just what we do. Five days a week, I'm talking <laughs> Brooklyn Nets basketball. Just make sure you subscribe over on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Reject your sense of injury, and the injury itself disappears. Why that is Mark Aurelius? Oh. All right, Mark, one of the all-time great poets. We'll be back again tomorrow. Talk to more Brooklyn Nets basketball. Basketball, 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 basketball.